this right here here yeah ah Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Facilitation Station. My name is Barry, and today we are going to be talking about how to load and unload the proper way to do a mousetrap. Uh, now, in this particular case, the reason why we're doing mousetraps on just the how-to is because in episode 35, we're going to be introducing a fun activity called mousetrap circles. Now, anytime you introduce something of uh, equipment, that might have a, a risk factor to it. You always want to introduce the proper way to treat that equipment uh, to minimize risk. Now you notice I didn't use the word safe <laughs> because you can't always guarantee safe because you don't know if a teenager is going to take a loaded mousetrap and try to throw it on somebody or what the case may be. So always remember, uh, as a mentor of mine used to say, his name was Dick Hammond. Thank you, Dizzy, for this um, uh, tip. But basically, it was right day, right time, right activity. So always monitor and evaluate your group as you're working through. And if this is a group that may not be as mature to take something of uh, something that has a little risk to it, um, then don't do the activity. And this is the same advice I'm going to give you here. If you feel like you're a group is not mature, then don't do it. But if you feel like they really want to work on communication, they really want to focus on how to interact and trust each other, then this is, might be some, a good prop for you to introduce several activities. So stick around for this video on the how-to. And on the back end, I'll show you a little quick trust exercise that you can do. Mouse traps. Um, this is a little bit slower activity. Uh, but the, the big, thing, big thing about the mouse traps it's great when you start talking about fear and anxiety. Um, you know, uh, the other thing is that what I like to do is when I start talking about it, I'm starting to play with the mouse trap. For those that are get scared, they start getting nervous, especially when I start walking around just like this. Okay? Because they don't know what's going on. But there's two reasons why I'm doing that. I'm playing with the mouse trap and I'm talking to the group at the same time. One is... Visually, I'm trying to show them the proper way to hold a mouse trap. Because the entire time I'm holding it on one end, and the spring is on the other end, okay, away from my fingers. So when I do let it go, it's not going to catch my fingers in any way. If you'll notice that the mouse trap is designed with a tail, a body, and a mouth, just like a mouse. Okay? So if you'll teach the students that the tail always points at you, and the mouth is going to point away from you because you don't want to get bit because this is a, a mean mouse, okay? Then that kind of helps a little bit. To set the trap properly, we're going to pull it back and I'm going to use my thumb. The reason why I use my thumb on the corner, I see some people do it like this. Well, if you get too caught up in it, you can get your fingers caught up in it. But if you play with the corner, down here at the, at the end, you can use two hands. If it slips, then it pops away from you. Again, the tail pointing at you the entire time. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to pull it back. I want to take the tail, and I'm going to leverage it over the spring, and I'm going to hook it right there. You see this little lip right here? I'm going to hook it right there if you never loaded a mousetrap before. And it's going to be right there. This is a great, another lesson for simple machines, leverages, how can a spring and a lever work together to uh, uh, make a more complex mechanism. So if you want to go that direction. But mostly this is great for risk, anxiety, and fear. If you want to go that direction. Now, because now it's loaded, uh, the one thing that you also want to do, especially with teenage boys, you want to put the uh, rule out there, don't take a loaded mousetrap and throw it at somebody. That's a bad thing. Okay? Then you give them the idea. And, yeah, then you give them the idea. So it's kind of one of those things you got to have to be kind of careful about. 
you know, right day, right time, right activity. Make sure that you've got the mood set right for this kind of activity. Now, you also want to teach about the proper way to unload a mousetrap. And the proper way to unload a mousetrap is just, uh, let's just say, put your hand on top of it. Would you like to do that for me? No? How about you? Nothing. Just put your hand on top? Nothing? You? No? Anybody? You want to do it? See, Jeff is going to do it. And Jeff is either crazy or he's done this before. <laughs> okay? Now, there's a reason why I have him coming to me. His fingers are actually pointing at me. Because if I put my fingers on top, my fingers are going to be, could be curled up on me, and it could spring and land on my fingers. But if he comes to me and his fingers are on this side, all it's going to do is roll up, and it's going to lock towards his palm, and it's not going to get his fingers. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, what I want you to do is I want you to put your hand on top of the mousetrap, but don't take it off. Keep pressure on it. I want to see okay, go. come home with a mousetrap Now, to his it's actually at this point, it's it sprung. <laughs> And here's what I want you to do. I want you to slightly lift your hand about this high off the ground. And I want everybody to look in between our hands. Because here's the deal. What you're going to notice is that tail is protecting the palm of his hand from the spring. Okay? So if he lifts off completely, go ahead, up. It's going to snap. And it's going to do that, that right there. Now, the one thing that you need to tell... You could scream for a minute. You could scream for a minute. What do they do? Now, the one thing that you want to tell your teenagers before you even start... It's to take that tail and start scraping their palm. Because did you feel it? Yeah. If they're not used to that and they don't know what to expect, it's going to freak them out and they're thinking something went wrong and I just got hurt. No, that tail is just basically rubbing against them as it comes across, protecting you from the spring. So you do want to introduce that little part right there. Well, welcome back from the video. I hope you got some good golden nuggets. I do apologize for the quality of the video as far as it shaking in some parts. But hopefully, if you listen to the words, saw some of the close-ups on the mousetrap and on how to disarm a mousetrap properly, uh, but also the verbiage. Now, I'm going to repeat it once more simply because this is a different mousetrap than you saw in the video. Um, so in this particular case, I have been noticing that mousetraps, uh, different vendors have started to go with a plastic, what I like to call the tongue. So if this was the mouth, and this was the tail of the mouse, uh, then basically you're taking his lip and you're pulling it back. And then as you hold his lip with the tongue, uh, with the tail, excuse me, you're gonna take the tongue and you're gonna lift it up and then just slip it underneath that little leverage right there. Um, I don't know if you can actually get a close up of that, but basically it is right there. And so, with these new plastic ones, they actually made them a little bit easier. Um, and also a little quick tidbit as well, you notice that I unloaded it properly, is that you may have to manipulate the staple. You may have to push it forward a little bit and also maneuver this one back a little bit so that the tail can actually reach the tongue. Uh, so don't be afraid to uh, manipulate them if you need to. Now, I said I was gonna introduce a trust activity. It's very simple. So get everybody in a partner, uh, and with partners, now if you have an odd number, then you get to play. Uh, so there's gonna be partner A and then partner B. Now one of those partners is gonna be blindfolded. We'll say partner B will be blindfolded. Uh, now, uh, in some particular cases, if you don't have blindfolds, and probably the most sanitary way is just to cover your eyes. So do that. I know there are some courses out there that do not ask for uh, physical blindfolds just because of pink eye and that kind of thing going around. So just ask them to cover their eyes and use integrity. Uh, but simply the idea is uh, to take partner A and partner B to face each other. As they face each other, blindfolded B is gonna be staring at you with their hand up in this position. Partner A is going to be holding a loaded mousetrap in their hand, facing their partner, and then basically partner A is going to be talking to partner B on how to manipulate their hand and place it correctly and directly over the mousetrap so you can disarm correctly. Now, you do want to remind them to take their fingers pointing at you uh, because as the mousetrap comes and, lo and, and snaps, you don't want them coming in this way, so you want them to go over the top and down so they're not getting their fingers caught, curled in in any way. So good safety reminder. 
questions. Now, I don't have a write-up for this. It's a great, quick tidbit I have for you, but I really hope you get some good nuggets out of it. And just remember that quote from my mentor from Dizzy Hammond. Uh, Dizzy, thank you. <laughs> right day, right time, right activity. Well, thanks for visiting Facilitation Station. We really hope that you enjoyed and received some great ideas from this episode. If you like more about this episode, be sure to check out facilitationstation.com where you can actually see our different blog posts, including the upcoming uh, mousetrap circles that will be coming up next week. Now, also, again, a huge shout out to Group Dynamics for allowing us to come and film in their facility. If you'd like to check out uh, Group Dynamics and more about them, please click here to visit their channel. If you'd like to receive more team building activities just like this one as we produce new content, then be sure to click here to subscribe. Also, be sure to click that little bell down there so that you receive those new notifications as they come. And again, thanks for visit visiting Facilitation Station. And then until next time, we'll see you later.